I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. This is the second part of a um, lecture about decimals and relationship between decimal fractions and rational numbers. In the first part, um, I have proved that every um, finite or infinite periodic decimal fraction is a representation of a rational number. Uh, like, for instance, the periodic will be something like 0 0.142857 in the period, which means infinite number of times repeated, and this is actually one sentence. Now, in this second part, I will um, try to prove the converse theorem that every rational number um, can be represented as a finite or infinite periodic uh, decimal fraction. First of all, a couple of purely philosophical observations. Why am I proving this type of thing? I mean, this is definitely um, proved by many different people in many different ways. So the purpose of this proof is not really to prove. It's already proven. It's purely educational. Um, more than that, I was trying to uh, put together a proof which does not really depend on any kind of prior knowledge, any kind of a theorem which was proven by somebody else. Um, it's a very, I would say, homegrown proof, which anybody can, um, anybody can do it himself. And that's why I think it's very important to really not to pay attention to whatever has been proven, but the way of the proof itself, because it might actually present certain um, logical benefits for you, and basically, again, the, the purpose is purely educational. That's number one. Number two, I would like to remind um, one very important uh, piece of the previous uh, lecture where I was talking about infinite geometrical progression. Um, I will do it slightly um, more generally than in that lecture. Um, if I have a sum of this type of members, so every next uh, member of this progression is the previous multiplied by Q. Now, this is called a geometrical progression, and if Q is less than 1, let's talk about positive numbers only, um, then obviously it's decreasing. Every member is smaller than the previous one by a factor of Q. Now, in this case, the sum of this uh, infinite uh, geometrical progression can be calculated very uh, easily. I did it in the previous lecture in a slightly less general case. But anyway, the way how it is done is the following. I multiply by Q all members of this thing. So A times Q is AQ. AQ times Q would be AQ squared, AQ cubed, etc. Um, by the way, I do not remember the final formula. Um, I always do this type of um, derivation and come with the formula. And that's basically something which I um, I, I think it's a, it's a better way, um, well, unless you have an infinite memory, I don't know. It's easier to remember the way how the formula is derived than the formula itself, which might be quite complex. So in this particular case, so what I did was I multiplied by Q um, this sum, which means every particular member is multiplied by Q. And as you see, um, this sum and this sum are very close to each other. You see, the difference is actually only A. Everything else is repeated, and this goes to infinity. So the whole tail will actually disappear if I will subtract from one another. From S, I subtract SQ, would be S minus SQ. And here, all these members will um, give the zero result. So basically, that's the final um, equation which I have, which I can solve for S. S obviously is equal to A, A divided by 1 minus Q. Okay, this is the formula for a sum of infinite geometrical progression with the first member A, 
and factor q, or multiplier q, whatever you call it. All right, let's just remember it. I'll put it aside here, because we will use it. In the previous lecture, I also used this formula because if I have a geometrical progression, uh, sorry, if I have a, a decimal fraction, periodic decimal fraction, actually it, act, it, it is the geometrical progression summed up. Because what this actually means is, well, let's illustrate it in a slightly more, uh, in, in a shorter example. Let's say I have 1 over 33, which is 0 0.03 in the period. Now. Um, what is this? It means it's 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, etc. up to infinity, right? Now, these are periods which are repeated infinite number of times. Now, the weight of this is one tenth, and the weight of this is one hundredth. So altogether, it represents three hundredths. Or, if you wish, I'd rather say it's 3 to the power of 10 minus 2. Now, next 0, 3, obviously, is what? Is 3 times 10 to the minus 4. Next 0, 3 is 3 times 10 to the minus 6, etc. And all together, it's basically a sum of these numbers this, 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 and all others. So it's basically, uh, it's 3 times 10 to the minus, minus 2, plus 3, 10 times minus 4, plus 3, 10 minus 6, etc., etc., equals the first member, which is 3, 10 minus 2, divided by 1 minus, and what's my multiplier? Obviously, it's 10 minus 2, right? So that's what it is, which is equal to 3 hundredths. 10 minus 2 is 100. 1 minus 100 equals to 3 over uh, 99. as I was saying, 133. So, there is a very uh, close relationship between infinite periodical decimal fraction and sum of the geometrical progression. So, this was used when I was proving in the first part that any periodic decimal uh, fraction is actually a rational number, because this is actually a rational number under any circumstances. And now I will use um, the same concept of infinite geometrical progression to prove the converse theorem, that every um, rational number can be represented by either periodic, final or periodic uh, decimal uh, fraction. Okay. Now, before proving this, I will simplify my task. Um, if I have uh, a rational number m over m, uh, if I will prove that 1 over m is a periodic decimal number, then how can I say that m over m is also periodic? Well, it's based on something which I presented um, as a problem 1 for this particular theme of rational numbers. Problem one is uh, prove that the uh, sum of two periodic decimal fractions is periodic. Um, I would like you to think about this as a very simple um, problem. And uh, I will also um, make a, a small presentation about how to solve this problem. But I really don't want to talk about this right now, because it kind of diverts us from the, from the main goal. But I hope that intuitively you feel that if you have one periodic um, decimal number and another periodic decimal number, then their sum will also be periodic. It's important for this particular uh, um, uh, theorem 
And so, instead of proving for any m over n, I will prove only for 1 over n. Because if I will do this, then I will add my periodic number, which is the result of this, to itself a couple of times. For instance, how about 2 sevenths? Well, 2 sevenths is 1 seven plus 1 seven. So I add these two together. Now, this is periodic and that is periodic. And the sum will be periodic as well. That's the problem one. Try to do it yourself. And I have. Uh, I will present my, my own decision as well. OK, so I will concentrate only on 1 over n type of rational numbers. But even that, I will try to, prove, uh, to, to simplify a little bit more. And here is what I'm going to do. Um, I would like to say that instead of proving for any n over 1 over n, I will prove this theorem only for those n which are not multiples of 2 or 5. And let me explain why. For instance, n is a multiply of, let's say, 2. It's 2 times k. Then I can always write that 1 over n is equal to 1 over 2 times k, or it's 5 over 10 times k of k. Now, to prove the periodicity of this decimal representation, it's enough, actually, to prove the periodicity of this. Because this is its basically the same thing as I started. Instead of proving for m over n, I can prove for 1 over n, and then add it up. Same thing here. I can prove the periodicity of the decimal representation of this, and add it to itself five times. Now, how about periodicity of 1 over 10k? Well, here it is. If 1 over k is periodic, let's say it's 0. Point, um, well, let's just use this example, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. In this case, k is equal to 7. So 1 over k is this. Now, what is 1 over 10 times, which is 10 times smaller very easily? It's 0 0.014287. Every uh, decimal digit, I shifted to the right. Since the weight of this was, let's say, 1 tenth, shifted to the right, it will be 1 over 100, which is 10 times smaller. Same thing with this one. 4 used to have a weight 1 over 100. Now it's 1 over 1,000, 10 times smaller. So every number, when I shift the whole um, uh, set of digits to the right and put 0 in front of it, um, it's actually divided by 10. So division by 10 uh, in the denominator of this rational number does not really change the periodicity. So instead of proving the periodicity of this, I can always prove the periodicity of this. So it's very important that from the very beginning, I consider n those which are not multiples of 2 or 5, because these can be converted into 10 times something. By the way, similarly, if I have n equals to 5 times k, I can always say that 1 over n is equal to 1 over 5k, which is 2 10 over k. So instead of proving the periodicity of 1 over n, I can prove the periodicity of this. Instead of this, I can put 1 over 10 over k. And instead of 1 over 10 times k, I can prove 1 over k again. So any number n which contains 2s or 5 can be actually reduced to whatever is the smallest number uh, which is not divisible by 2 or, or, uh, or 5. For instance, instead of proving the theorem for, mm, let's say, let's say 1 over 35, I can say that 35 is divisible by 5. So it's actually 1 over 5 times 7, which is actually the same as 2 times 10 over 7. And if I prove the periodicity of 1 over 7, which is this one, it's sufficient to prove the periodicity of 1 over 35. OK, so enough that we are considering 
the rational numbers 1 over n, or in a more formal representation, and as I used to uh, use when I was defining rational numbers, it's this representation. And n is not multiple of 2 or 5. Well, OK. <clears throat> I just invented this sign, not multiple of. There is probably something else. doesn't really matter. So n is not multiple of 2 or 5. And therefore, not multiple of 10, of course, as well. And now the proof. OK. I will use this 1 over 7 as an example. I think it would be easier. So in general, if I have 1 over n, I will consider n numbers 9, 99, 999, etc., up to 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9,
Now we subtract one, we have nine nines, the uh, eight nines. All right, so having said that, I can say that n is equal to 10 to the a minus 1 divided by k. And we are considering this in a general case, so I will put it here, um, 10 to the a minus 1 divided by k. Now, what will be in our particular case of 1 over 7s? Well, I made an observation that 6 nines is divisible by 7. 6 nines is divisible by 7, and it's equal to 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. You see? This is the same number. So I've noticed that we are considering the case when one of these numbers is divisible by 7, right? So I, I, I did found one. So this is exactly the case when you have this particular number. When there is none, it will be another case. But right now we have found something which is divisible. And therefore, I can say that 10 to the minus, 10 to the 6th degree minus 1 divided by k, which is 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, is equal to 7. This is exactly the same in our particular case. <coughs> okay, now, what can we do about this? In the general case, we can say that 1 n, 1 over n, is equal to k divided by 10 to the a minus 1, which is equal to k times 10 to the minus a, and 1 minus 10 to the minus a. I multiply by 10 to the power of minus a, uh, numerator and denominator, so this will be in the numerator, obviously, and the denominator, if, I'm up, if I multiply 10 to the a times 10 to the minus a, I will have 1, and if I will have 1 multiplied by 10 minus a, it will be 10 minus a. Now, this, obviously, is exactly like this formula. Now, in our particular case, what that will be? 1 sevenths equals to 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 1 minus 10 to the minus 6. Well, that's it. The theorem is basically proven. Because, as you see, since this is exactly this, I can say that k times 10 to the minus a, k times 10 to the minus a, is the beginning. That's the first member of my geometrical progression. And 10 to the minus a is its multiplier. So next one will be k times 10 to the minus 2a plus k times 10 to the minus 3a, etc which express is a decimal number, k is some integer, right? So k times um, 10 to the minus a will be something like 0 point and some digits here. How many digits? A digits, right? Then I have the same k shifted to the right by again take uh, 8 digits. So it will be the same digits which, which are here will be the same on the second group of eight digits, and then another eight digits, etc., etc., after infinity. In our particular case, what will be is k times 10 to the minus a, which is this, is 0 0.142857. Next one will be shifted by one millionth to the right, which is 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. 
Next will be 0 0.0000003. Six, and then again, one, four, two, eight, five, seven. And when we summarize them all together, it will be one, four, two, eight, five, seven, one, four, two, eight, five, seven, because the rest are zeros, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Which basically forms the periodic decimal number. So we have proven the theorem for a case, um, except one small detail, but um, I don't want right now to, to, to talk about this small detail. You can probably read about this in the written part of this lecture. It's really about the size of k. So the k to the 10 minus a is within the a digits, no more than that. Um, so it doesn't overflow the period. But that's a m minor point, and you can read about this yourself. So anyway, we have proven the first case when 1 over n is a rational number. And then we consider n numbers 9, 99, 999, etc., up to 999 n times, we have assumed that there is one of these which is divisible by n. What if there is none? Well, that's actually um, quite easy to, to, to deal with. You see, these are n different numbers. If you divide by n, n different numbers, how many different remainders you can get? Well, if you divide uh, by a number and it's not divisible, then you can have a remainder 1, or 2, or 3, etc., or n minus 1. So different remainders are from 1 to n minus 1, when you divide something by n. These are your remainders, 1, 2, 3, etc., n minus 1. There is no remainder n, because it means it's divisible, and then n plus 1 remainder is actually the same as 1. So obviously, there are only n minus 1 remainders which can be obtained if you divide all these n different numbers. Which means what? That some of these two, uh, some of these numbers, at least two, have exactly the same remainder. Um, remember this famous uh, principle of Dirichlet, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you have 101 rabbits, and only one cages, you cannot place them each individual uh, into each individual cage. At least a couple of rabbits should be in the same cage. So here is the same. We have n numbers, but only n minus 1 different remainders. So at least two of them must be the same. So let's consider that you have two different remainders which are the same. And let me exemplify it again with um, some uh, numerical example. Uh, I will use example 1 over 70. I know this is not exactly what uh, I was considering in the beginning, that the number n does not have divisors uh, of 2 nor, nor 5. And uh, this does have it. But I needed just to exemplify about remainders, this thing. So, Considering this principle, I have to take 70 different numbers, 9, 99, 999, etc., up to 79 in a row as a big, big, big number. Now, if I will start dividing it by 70, I will start getting certain remainders. But 9 gives a remainder 9 if you divide by 70, and 9999999 will give a uh, remainder also 9. Um, don't ask me how I know about it. Uh, actually, it's very simple. If 6 nines is divisible by 7, then 6 nines and 0 is divisible by 70. So 9 extra, and that's why 9 is a remainder. So these two numbers represent um, numbers which have the same remainder when divided by 70. So, if two numbers have the same remainder, then their difference is obviously divisible by the number. So, this minus this is divisible by 70, which is what? 999, 999, 0. In the general case, I can also say that something like 999999 and then 0, 0, something, 0, you have, let's say, K9s and L0s. 
would be if I subtract these two numbers which have the same um, remainder. So one number would be 9999999, all of them, and another will be 999, the smaller one. So if I subtract, I will have number of nines and number of zeros. Right? Same thing in here. Now, so my statement right now is that if there is none which divisible by n, then there is definitely a pair which has the same remainder, and their difference looks like this. Okay, so this number is divisible by n. So we can say that this number is equal to n times k. Okay, what's the result of this? Well, obviously, we can say the following. This number represents something like 10 to uh, the power of m minus 1. That's the 99999 minus a smaller 999, 10 to the power of, let's say, um, I, I probably have to use different letters here. I'll use lowercase m and n minus 1. That's what this number is. All 999s will, will be this, and smaller 999 will be this, which is obviously equal to 10 to the m minus 10 to the n, or 10 to some number, well, let's say n is smaller than n. And you can have that n times 10 to the m minus n minus 1. And this is equal to still the same thing. Um, no, I shouldn't really put, yeah, we can put the n times k. Now, here is what's important in this particular case. Let me just leave the, the very last formula. We have, from the very beginning, assumed that n is not divisible by neither 2 nor 5. What does it mean? It means that this 10 to the nth degree Is, has no common um, multipliers, no common divisors with, uh, with n. Because this has only twos and fives. Which means what? That this number should contain all the prime numbers which comprise the number n. So no matter what number n is, if you will uh, represent it as some uh, uh, the product of certain prime numbers, let's say, then all these prime numbers should be here. None of them is here, because there are no twos and no fives, which means that 10 to the m minus n minus 1 is actually divisible by n times some number l. So, my initial suggestions, suggestion that n has no divisors of 2 or 5 actually means that this, uh, my, my initial suggestion of the case 2, that there are no um, numbers among these n um, which are divisible by n, really cannot be true. If I assume that this is a true statement, that there are two um, numbers in this group which give the same remainder, then I will come up with this formula. And from this formula, what follows is that since 10 to the nth degree has nothing to do with n, then this number should be divisible by n. And this number is definitely among these. So there is no such case when the number n, which is not a multiple of 2 or 5, has no um, um, uh, no divisors, has no numbers among these which are divisible by n. 
So this situation is just impossible. Case two, when there is no number among these, which is a multiple of n, is not possible at all. So that basically ends up the case two. And everything goes back to the case one, and the case one we have already proven. Well, that proves that every rational number uh, can be represented as a finite or infinite decimal uh, periodic uh, fraction. Well, that's it. Now we still have the problem number one, which is about sum up, uh, which is summing of uh, two different periodic numbers. You have to prove that this is also periodic. And uh, uh, I would definitely suggest you to do it yourself. It's not a difficult thing. But anyway, I do provide, I will provide, not yet, I will provide um, a small lecture about this particular problem. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.